Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and a life uh, and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you. And let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine, being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin, so you try to lift the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening the coffin. You just think you're going to die. Then you think, maybe if I bang on the lid, I'll unsettle the dirt, and somebody might notice and start digging their way down to help me. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn for help. In reality, there are probably people standing right nearby your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind while you were abusing drugs and alcohol that maybe, just maybe, you might overdose and take something that was preciously given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ, your life, not just away from yourself, but from the people that love and count on you most, the people like your children, your grandchildren, your mother, your father, your husband, your wife. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be about to, uh, be like the person I'm reading about on these index cards that waited, waited until it was too late to seek help. Instead, be a person that reaches out to me at 844-405-HELP, and I promise I'll help you take your life back before your life is gone. There are people like Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis and I always tell people like you, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is that you're reaching out for a better today and a brighter future. Call Larry at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis can also be found at www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry will take you from your addiction to your recovery, from depression to happier times, from low self-esteem to raise your self-esteem. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-458-2741. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Monday is Memorial Day. But folks, is Memorial Day about barbecues and drinking and going to the beach? Absolutely not. Let's discuss what Memorial Day is all about. And I want to thank each and every veteran presently and past that served for the armed services. Thank you for your service. And as you can tell by my picture right there, that is me in the Marine Corps. Memorial Day, an American holiday observed on the last Monday on May, of May, I should say, honors men and women who died while serving in the U.S. military. Originally known as Decoration Day, it, is, it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday in 1971. Many Americans observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials, holding family gatherings and participating in bar parades. Unfortunately, or I, I should say unofficially, at least it marks the beginning of the summer. Early observations, uh, observances of Memorial Day. The Civil War claimed more lives than any conflict in U.S. history, requiring the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. By the late 1860s, Americans in various towns and cities had begun holding springtime tributes to those countless falling soldiers, decorating their graves with flowers and reciting prayers. Did you know... Each year on Memorial Day, a national moment of remembrance takes place at 3 p.m. local time uh, on Monday, the last Monday of May. It is unclear whether exactly this tradition originated. Numerous different communities have had independently initiated the memorial gatherings. Nevertheless, in 1966, the federal government declared Waterloo, New York, the official birthplace of Memorial Day. Waterloo, which had first celebrate the day on May 5th, 1866, has chosen, was chosen because businesses closed uh, the community-wide wide event during which businesses did officially close and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and good old American flags. Decoration Day on May 5th, 1962, General John A. Logan, leader of an organized Organization of Northern Civil War Veterans called for a nationwide day for remembrance later that month. The 30th of May, 1868, it is designated for the purpose of strewing the flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country 
during late rebellion and those whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, hamlet, churchyard in the land, he proclaimed. The date of Decoration Day's a day, as called it, was chosen because it's the anniversary of many particular battles. On the first Decoration Day, General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington Cemetery and 5,000 particular participants decorated the graves of 20,000 Union Confederate soldiers buried there. Many northern states held similar commemorative events and reprised the tradition in subsequent years. By 1890, one made Decoration Day an official state holiday. Many southern states, on the other hand, continued to honor their dead on separate days until World War I. Evolution of Memorial Day Memorial Day, as Decoration Day, gradually came to be known, originally honored by uh, those lost while fighting the Civil War. But during World War I, the United States found itself embroiled in another major conflict, and the holiday evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars. For decades, Memorial Day continued to be observed on May 30th, the date Logan had selected for the first Decoration Day. But in 1968, Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, which established Memorial Day as the last Monday in May in order to create a three-day weekend for the federal employees. The change went into effect in 1971. The same law also declared Memorial Day a federal holiday. Memorial Day Traditions Cities and towns across the United States host Memorial Day parades each and every year, often incorporating military personnel parades members of the veterans' organizations participating in all of those events. Some of the largest parades take place in places like Chicago, New York, and D.C. Americans also observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries and memorials. On, less somber, on a less so, somber note, many people throw parties and barbecues on a holiday, perhaps because it unofficially marks the first day of summer. Here is Memorial Day history. Three years after the Civil War ended, on Mar uh, May 5, 1968, the head of the Organization of U Union Veterans, the Grand Army of Republican, established Decoration Day as the time for the nation to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. Major General John A. Logan declared that Decoration sh Day should be observed on May 30th. It is believed that they, that day was chosen because flowers would bloom all over the country. The first large observance was held that year at Arlington National Cemetery across the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. The ceremony centered around the morning draped veranda of the Arlington Mansion, once the home of General Robert um, E. Lee, various Washington officials, including General and Mrs. Ulysses S. Grant, presided over the ceremonies. After speeches, children from the soldiers and sailors, often home and, and members of the GAR, made their way through the cemetery, putting flowers and flags within all the graves. Local observances claimed to be the first local springtime tributes for the Civil War dead already that had been held in various places throughout the country. One of the first happened in Columbus, Mississippi, April 25, 1866, when a group of women visited the cemetery to decorate the graves of Confederate soldiers who had fallen in the Battle of Shiloh. Nearby were the graves of the Union soldiers neglected because they were the enemy. Disturbed by the sight of the bare graves, the women placed some of their flowers on those graves as well. Today, cities in North and South claim to be the birthplace of Memorial Day in 1866. Both Macon and Columbus, Georgia, claimed the title, as well as Richmond, Virginia. The village of Boldsburg, Pennsylvania, claims it began there two years earlier. A stone in Carbondale, Illinois, cem cemetery carries the statement that the first Decoration Day ceremony took place in 1820, excuse me, April 29, 1866. Carbondale was the wartime home of General Logan. Approximately 25 places have been named in connection with the origin of Memorial Day, many of them in the South where the most war dead were buried. Official birthplace declared in 1966, Congress and President Lyndon Johnson declared Waterloo, New York, the birthplace of Memorial Day. There, a ceremony on May 5, 1866, honored local veterans who had fought in the Civil War. Businesses closed and residents flew flags at half-mass. 
Supporters of Waterloo claim uh, Waterloo's claims say earlier observances in other places were either informal or not community-wide or time events. By the end of the 19th century, Memorial Day ceremonies were being held on May 30th throughout the nation. State legislatures passed pro proclamations to designate the day, and the Army and the Navy adopted uh, so-called Decoration Day. It was then also placed on the last Monday in May, which still exists to this day. Some states have Confederate obs observances. Many southern states also have their own days for honoring the Confederate dead. Mississippi celebrates Confederate Memorial Day on the last Monday of April. Alabama on the fourth Monday of April. And Georgia on April 26th. North and South Carolina observe it May 10th. Louisiana on June 3rd, and Tennessee calls that day Confederate Decoration Day. Texas celebrates Confederate Heroes Day January 19th, and Virginia calls the last Monday in May Confederate Memorial Day. As you can see, that's quite uh, different uh, in, in different areas. General Logan's order for his post to decorate graves in 1868 with choicest flowers of springtime was urged. We should guard their graves uh, with sacred vigilance. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverend visitors and fond mourners. Let no neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or the coming generations that we have forgotten the people that gave up their lives to make this country where it is and how it stands today. The crowd attending the first Memorial Day ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery was approximately the same size as those that attend today's observances, about 5,000 people. Then, as now, small American pla flags were placed on each grave, a tradition followed by many national cemeteries today. In recent years, the custom has grown into families to decorate the graves with, uh, of all their departed loved ones. The origin of special services to honor those who die in the war can be found in, uh, in Twitter. The Anthean leader, Paracel, offered a tribute to the fallen heroes in Pelophian's War over 24 centuries ago that could be applied to today to the 1.1 million Americans who have died in the nation's wars combined. Not only are they com uh, commemorated by columns and inscriptions, but they there dwells also an unwritten memorial on them, graven not on the stone, but in the hearts of many men. To ensure the sacrifices of American fallen heroes are never forgotten in December 2000, the U.S. Congress passed and pres uh, presented, signed into, uh, the President signed into law the National Moment of Remembrance Act creating the White House Commission on the National Moment of Remembrance. The Commission's charter is to encourage the people of the United States to give something back to their country, which provides them so much freedom and opportunity by encouraging and coordinating camaraderie in the United States of Memorial Day and the National Moment of Remembrance. The National Moment of Remembrance encourages all Americans to pause whatever they might be doing at exactly 3 p.m. local time on Memorial Day for a minute of silence to remember, honor, and pray for those who have died to the service of this wonderful country. As Moment of Remembrance founder Carmela Spada states, it's a way we can all help put the memorial back in Memorial Day. Listen to those words, the memorial back in Memorial Day. To memorize those who are giving what is so specially given to us by the Lord Jesus, life. They gave their life to have you be able to sit here and watch this video. Most of us in the tw uh, 21st century have signed up to go into military and part of signing up to go into the military is to accept the fact that if there is a war that you and I have the chance of giving up our lives for this great country. But those are the prices that we have signed up to pay to give our children and our grandchildren a life of freedom. Let's remember the thousands and more of people that have given the ultimate price called life. 
to allow you to have the freedom that you have today. God gave life. Wars take life. And we need to remember those lives. I hope to God that each and every person that gave up their life for this great country rests peacefully in heaven. I also pray for the people that fought against us. May they find peace within God's kingdom. Most of the time, wars are not created by individuals. Most of the time, wars are created by politicians, by countries that just don't seem eye to eye. Let us remember all present and past that have served this great country, all men and women alike. And may God bless each and every veteran. And may God bless each and every person that gave up their life. And may God bless you. And have a happy, a happy and safe Memorial Day. And if you have any questions whatsoever about uh, addictions or life itself, call me at 844-405-HELP. And may God bless you.